Now, you have been quoted saying, I know that you are a, a, a very outspoken proponent of women's issues, and you said that we need more women leaders in the fight against HIV. My friend, we need more women leaders in all aspects. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, indeed, because my experience in the past long, long years, many, many years, is that if a woman leader is convinced of a cause, she would do a lot of things and she can make things work. I am not saying that the men don't, but I have seen how women work from the highest level to the most even illiterate women, women leaders, that once they are convinced of a cause, boy, they can move the earth to be able to achieve that. Uh, and I have many years of experience in that. So our hope lies in women. Both men and women. Okay. I'm a gender person, so All right. I know that both men and women, we have to share this planet. We cannot live alone. We cannot live without the man. And neither true. can the man live without us. That's true. Not too long ago, there was a lot of uh, news about um, implanting microchips <laughs> in HIV AIDS patients, which was sharply criticized. What is the status of that? Well, there has never been a plan to, to do that. This was one crazy idea of one local legislator who proposed that in the draft uh, local regulation. Of course, we immediately say no. And it was rejected and finished. But the press, this is very hot news, uh, so everybody acts as, as if this was approved. No, not at all. It, it was taken out of the draft. So it's going nowhere. It was a crazy idea, as you yes. said. Yes. It's against human rights. Yeah, but also it cannot be implemented. But first of all, the technology doesn't exist, okay? He has seen too many movies. But if you implement a chip to monitor, who's going to monitor it? And how can you differentiate between this man dancing and having sex? And what do you do if somebody in Ramena up in the mountains, their chip is, is going there? How do you know? Is somebody going to... It's for the words. It's nonsense. Okay, we have spoken about AIDS in uh, Indonesia. However, the borders are becoming more and more open. We are seeing a lot of trans-border uh, traffic in all kinds of fields. I can see the, the problem spreading yes. regionally. Yes. Is anything being done collectively, say among ASEAN countries, uh, to, to encounter, to manage this problem? Not concretely. Uh, because indeed the last report of the AIDS Commission in Asia has provided a very clear warning that if you don't do anything, if you don't prevent a disaster now, we'll be sorry. The report was very comprehensive of Asian countries showing that some countries have already, the, the epidemic has already changed the course, which is going down like this, like Thailand, etc. And then most of our countries are still doing this, including Indonesia. And then we still have those that are at the moment low risk, and there is, it's like this, but potentially they can increase, as you said, because the traffic among countries uh, is open. And indeed, there has been talk about having multi-country uh, programs. Like, for instance, last year, we tried to have a, an ASEAN program for migrant workers. Uh, so, from, for instance, from Indonesia to to Singapore or to, to uh, Japan, etc., but didn't fly. We failed. Uh, we have not been able to access resources. Our proposal was uh, refused by the Global Fund. I have not yet seen a new proposal 
to have this multi-country. We do have now the program, local program between our side of Papua, West Papua, and PNG. Uh, that that is starting off. The the epidemic in PNG and um, West Papua are very similar. So the commitment was made to uh, collaborate to prevent the um, spread of HIV because of uh, people uh, going back and forth across the border. So that's one. We are now also hoping that uh, Batam, Batam is Singapore and Malaysia, uh, there will be more ac action there. Uh, but it, it has not yet taken uh, off the ground. Well, that will be your next challenge. <laughs> yes, also, but actually, infection among Indonesians by Indonesians is big enough. It's already a great challenge, and uh, we have to do that first. On that note, Ibu Nafsia, thank you very much for your very interesting and informative um, presentation. My pleasure. Thank you.